Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignIntectives.com. Well, today we're going to have a little look at CSS class names and CSS IDs. Both are fantastic features. We've touched on them before in a few videos. We're just going to do a quick demonstration of how to use those things today. I've got a little spinning icon there. When I hover over it, it's going to stop. I'll show you how to create that. And just down below, I've got another little icon. If we click on that, it'll take us to a different section. Now that second icon is a CSS. We're using a CSS ID. The first icon, I'm using an actual CSS class name on that one. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Let's go down to where we were working and I'm going to delete this one. And let's add a new one. I'll use a little icon again for this. And let's use that similar icon right there. Great. I'm just going to turn it that default blue we've been using here. Let's go back over to the advanced over here. This is always where you'll find CSS ID in classes and custom CSS. And this is for every module, row and section. So I'm going to quickly write a bit of custom CSS and don't let that put you off. I'll put this down below for anybody that just wants to copy and paste it. So in here, I'm going to invent a class name and it can be anything you want. I'm going to call mine SPICO. It's my shorthand for spinning icon. Like I say, you can call it anything you want, but it must be unique. I'm going to open and close some curly brackets. And we can tell it what we want it to do now. We've got a class name and the class name is an identifier. And I'll show you how to use that in a moment. So I want it to be an animation. So I'm going to say animation. And we've got to give that animation a name. Again, this wants to be unique. I'm going to call mine ICSPN. Again, shorthand for IC icon spin, if you like. I want my animation to last for 10 seconds. And obviously you can adjust this for your text. I want it to be infinite so it doesn't stop. And I also want it to be linear so it's nice and smooth. Great. We now have to create this animation that we called IC spin or ICSPN. So let's drop down a couple more. And don't forget this code down below for anybody who just wants to copy and paste. We're using keyframes to build this today. So I'm going to say at keyframes. Then the name that we gave it, which was IC spin or, I, or ICSPN. Now we know we close some more curly brackets and tell it exactly what we want it to do with this animation. Well, at 0% or second one, basically of our 10 seconds there, I'm going to write 0%, 0%. Open, close some more curly brackets. I really don't want it to do a, a lot. So I'm going to say transform. I'm going to be using rotate for this today. Rotate. And at the end there, we can open some round brackets and tell it how much we want it to rotate by. Initially, nothing. So I'm going to put zero degrees. So it's going to be that way around when the page loads. I'm now going to copy this. Control C to copy. I'm going to drop down and paste it in there. Control V to paste. Halfway along at five second mark or 50% of our animation time there. I want it to be flipped around the other way. So I'm going to say 360 degrees. And then at the 100%, I want it to be back around the right way again so it can start off. And the easiest way to do that is just to put a comma after the 0% and add the 100% there. Or you can add another line if you want 0, 50, 100 and do it that way. Great. Well, nothing's happening, is it? Well, we haven't given it this class name to identify it to animate. So class names, when we write them, as I mentioned earlier, they all start with a dot or a period when you're writing them as code. When you wanted to apply it to something, you do not need that dot or period. So it's just going to be S-P-I-C-O. So let's roll up a little bit right at the top. Like I mentioned earlier, this is always in advance in all modules. It's a class name and the class name was SPICO. Now look what's happening. It's rotating. Now that's not the way I actually wanted it to rotate, but that's okay. I wanted it to rotate around the opposite axis. Let's just modify that code. 
by putting a Y right at the end of rotate, just before the degrees, a capital Y. And the same for the one below. And there we go. We've got it spinning the way I actually wanted it there. Now that might get on your nerves, so I'm going to have it stop on hover. Really easy to do. I'll just copy this whole thing up here from the dot to that closing bracket. I'm going to drop down a couple. Right after the O of SPICO there, I'm going to put a colon with no gap, and then no gap again, and the word hover. We've just created a hover state. And animation, all I want to do is tell it to stop. So I'm going to say animation, none. Now when you hover over it, it's going to actually stop. So we've created that class name now, CSS class name. So anything that we give that name to is now going to animate like this, whether it's a row or a section. Let's just demonstrate that perhaps. Let's copy that class name one more time. Probably not a great example, but you can give it to this image if you wanted to. I go into the image, always find CSS IDs and classes up here. It's a class, not an ID. We put that in there. We've got that image spinning. Not the best example, but that is a CSS class. You write some code and give anything the class and it'll apply that class to it. We just get out of there. If you wanted to, you could apply it to a whole row or a section if you wanted to. Let's give it to this section. Again, this is going to be a little crazy looking, but I'm sure you get the idea. Again, advanced CSS IDs and classes. Put our little class name in there. The whole section's flipping around. And then when we hover over, it should stop. Fantastic. And again, I probably wouldn't do that, but I'm sure you get the idea. And that's basically a CSS class. Now, because we've written the code actually in this module, this probably won't work on any other pages. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to write it into the custom CSS. Get to the custom CSS. If we go back to the dashboard, and you can either go down to Appearance and Customize, and you'll find the additional CSS panel there, or you can go down to Divi down here, just to the Theme Options. And if we roll down here, you can put any custom CSS in this box, like that animation. I go back to this page. And copy this animation code. I can get rid of it here. When I get rid of it here, that'll stop. And you can put it in your custom CSS here. Just paste it in there. And that will now work site-wide. Make sure you save your changes here. And you're good to go. Go back to this page. That Even if I put that class name in, I don't think that's going to work until we save that page and refresh here. Let's do that and I'll show you a CSS ID. I'm just going to save the changes and refresh this page. Now let's roll back down to where we were working. Yep, that's spinning again now, fantastic. Okay, CSS ID. Let's just move this up the top of there so it's out of the way. Let's get rid of this little fella and we'll start this from scratch as well. What I'm gonna do is go down and give this section a CSS ID. I'm pretty sure it's actually got one. If we go in here, let's have a look. CSS ID, yep, it's got a class or an ID of PPL. It's kind of shorthand for people. And again, your CSS ID wants to be unique. There does not want to be any other IDs like this on this page at all, or else this won't work. Whereas class names, you can apply to different things and have them animate as you saw. CSS IDs really identify one place on the page and it's great for anchor tags and things like that. So we've got a CSS ID of PPL for this section here. So we can link to it very easily by making it an anchor tag with an icon or whatever module you want. You can link anything to anything using this method. So let's save our changes here. We'll go back up. Let's add a little icon down the bottom here. A little plus to add a new one. Again, I'm going to grab that little icon. Now yeah, we'll use the down chevron this time. Want it to be a bit smaller than that, really. I'm going to make it by default blue. Let's make it 
40 pixels. Whatever works for you, obviously. Now to link it to that section below and have it scroll down there could not be easier. All we need to do is go into our content. You always find link under content. Icon link. Because it's a CSS ID below, we need to put a hashtag in front of it. All CSS IDs have a hashtag. All class names have a dot or a period. So we've got the hash hashtag in there. Let's paste the actual name. And now this will link to that section. We save our changes. Exit the visual builder. Roll back down to where we were working. If I hit that, as you can see, it scrolls down to our little section right there. And as I say, you can use any module, you can use any icon, you can use a text module to do exactly the same thing. Remember, we're using a CSS ID to do this. And we were using a CSS class name, to create that little animated icon right there. So there's a brief overview of using CSS class names and CSS ID. I hope you found this interesting today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This has been another video on our series of Divi for Beginners. You can find that playlist down below. If you have any questions, just pop them down below this video. I'll do my best to answer them or make a little demo video like this one for you. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.